Welcome back everyone. Uh, today is a bit of a wet and drab and dreary day. Uh, with all the storms and everything we've been having, it's uh, it's not been great weather. It's been very wet, very windy and uh, things have been blown around all over the place. So I thought we'd start today with having a quick look into the greenhouses just to see what's happening with the trees. So here we are in the greenhouse and if we start looking through the trees we can see that the aces, the smaller aces, are budding out. They're coming through. The willow that was taken as a cutting from a tree uh, well known to my wife. Uh, the acer palmatum is getting its leaves coming through. They're coming out nicely. And the acer katsura is well on its way. So. Uh, Spring is definitely on its way guys, we're, uh, we're heading up. The the catalpas are here, not looking in too good shape. Uh, they were in the tents, they did get attacked by the, the bugs as well. Uh, there's a couple of them that are surviving. Um, but I think we'll be trimming some of those back and just relying on the the woody stems to, to provide us with some additional growth. Kay's bonsai is budding out. So that's coming out. That's been in dormancy over the winter. Nice to see that that's coming through. The ginkgo biloba doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, so we're just going to keep that in here and hope that something comes from it. It's quite soft and flexible, so I don't think it's it's died or anything. Um, we'll just have to wait and see if anything comes out from there. The larches, the pre-bonsai forest larches, you can see the buds on a lot of them coming through, uh, budding out, and then this one larch has decided to put out some green growth and we've got the buds exploding out there you can see we've got plenty of growth off this larch so we'll see how the uh, the pre bonsai forest larch trees perform this year so we're now in what is fast becoming known as the jade greenhouse. These are all the cuttings that are going to be prepared and ready for dispatch for all the people that uh, that wanted some cuttings. I have been let down twice now for uh, packaging to be able to set these up to, to go out for delivery. So that's quite disappointing. Um, some saplings that came from my trip to France is starting to bud out so that's good they're coming through uh, and yeah everything relatively looks in pretty good shape we need to uh, do quite a bit of work so there's plenty of plenty of things for us to do um, but yeah I need to get the packaging sorted out so that I can start sending these jades out to everybody who wanted one and also just up on the pre bonsai shelf here we have the willows all coming out all doing really well the pine the thuya all doing really well we seem to have lost the lid off of Harry's planting but uh, I don't think we're going to get anything out of there Nothing's grown at all from that kit, unfortunately. So uh, I don't think we're going to be getting anything from that. And some more pre bonsais starting to bud out in different places. Some of the little trees don't seem to have made it through, but we'll um, we'll keep them in to see if we get anything over spring and summer <clears throat> and down below we can see they're budding out on the tops uh, the, 
the larch there doesn't seem to be in good shape can't see any live buds on it but we'll leave that to see the oak tree seems okay and yeah lots of work to do so let's go back inside and do some work on the Sagarita Chinese plum. So here we are with the Sagaritia and as you can see it has grown, grown and grown, it's grown really well. So today's operation is going to be to trim this back get some balance back into the tree and get it sorted out. So here we are finally inside with the uh, Sagarita in front of us. Uh, we've got a lot of pruning to do on this. So what I'll do is I'll start by bringing it back to a point where we can start doing some proper pruning and then we can get down into the roots. So we'll bring it back to the the canopy we've got a lot of choices to make we've got some dead dead branching lower branching in places we've got quite a number of branches just shooting off here, there and everywhere. This one sort of comes from around the back and it's a shame to lose it but it sort of comes from around the back and goes all the way around so because it's crossing we'll have to lose that one. And then as we look at these upward facing shoots we'll take those off where they leave the branch another one here shooting up we'll take that away this is our main trunk through here so we have another one up here that's trying to compete with that so we'll take that one back And we'll have to do some tidy up work in there. We've got this branch that goes across, which we could either use that as some sort of shaping, but we'll continue to bring it back to the canopy. So just working around, bringing the branching in. got some lovely branches shooting off but this will have been taking a lot of energy out of the tree to keep these leaves growing and keep these branches growing so we'll get all this brought right back in always a shame to to lose all that nice good branching but for bonsai it's what we need to do. So we'll bring that in to the first two sets of roots. So now we can start looking at the tree and start making some, some bigger decisions. So we've got our main trunk comes up, divides into four or five at this point, and then our main trunk carries on up there. So this junction's got quite a few coming out at the same point, so we'll just take the ones off that we don't want. We're going to have to try and do some tidy up in there with some branch pruners going forward. It's a little bit awkward to get in there. We'll have to get some branch pruners for that. So this is where we're going to have our two coming up. We then break into two again rather early 
there, so we'll lose that internal branch. It then branches into two here, and then a third one coming off to the side, so we'll take that away. And then we've got a division again where there's three and this this one that goes across that uh, we could use for a bit of shaping if we if we were to keep this it's going to compete and cross um, so I'm going to take the upright one because it's the weaker one back which will give us our little bit of shaping to this to this tree uh, where that comes off and goes into two immediately I'm going to just take the more internal one of the two away and this is only quite a rough prune it's got it's done some really good growing and then obviously we're taking all these shoots away but <coughs> it will put in some nice growth again going forward it goes into three here so we'll take that branch off there and then just tidy up around the trunk as we go there's quite a few that just need to be tidied up down here we've got multiple branches coming out we've got two coming out at the same spot there so we'll take those away unfortunately for the tree and we'll keep this one in for the time being and then we're going into two and then up and into two we need to tidy this away here we then come up our main trunk goes into two and then it goes into three here um, we will for the time being retain this one because these two are pretty much bang close to each other so we'll take that away we have that going across there so we do have that branch coming out at the front which I'm just going to take back to there and just tidy that up a little bit we'll leave the the shoots on to see if we get any nice branching coming out of there but uh, it will give us some options going forward as to whether or not we continue the movement of the tree as it is or whether we bring it down into a broom style type of canopy um, but I'm kind of liking quite a bit of the movement that we've got going on there we just need to tidy up the branches as best we can I will have to get some pruners out for that there uh, the main branch comes up again the main trunk divides into two and then continues up and divides into two again up here so we'll take that back to the first two sets of leaves again we do just have a bit of a dead branch there that we'll take away I think I managed to knock the leaves off as well and I'll just take that out that might not last really well now but uh, we're down to a nice minimal amount now the we need to keep this foliage on so we've lost a real load of foliage So from all that, what we had, we can see now we've got a stick with a few branches and a few leaves. Um, it's, got a, <laughs> it's got a lot of fighting back to do to become a, a bonsai again. Um, yeah, it's been through, it grew really well and maybe should have been pruned back a lot earlier than, uh, than I have done it. So this is the 
uh, trunk that was been chopped off previously that just needs taking back and we'll try to utilize this divergence in the, uh, the trunk and I'm okay with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get it out of the pot because what all that was going up up above there must have been a lot going on with the roots down below so let's get it out of the pot and give it a, uh, a root prune and repot it back in. So here we are let's see whether it'll uh, come out of the pot oh yeah straight out and there you can see lots and lots of roots where it's been uh, been doing really well in the in the tents upstairs so if we get our rake and just try and break out these roots and see what sort of system we've got here Obviously, as we break out in our standard radial pattern, we will tear the crossing roots, but it's something that we always have to listen to and put up with. But we'll get, get these all raked out and see what sort of root system we have on offer. All these fine roots that have been growing away in the uh, while it's been sat in the tent upstairs they've all developed and grown tremendously um, but we'll get, get them. Get it raked out as well as we can and uh, I'm sure it'll be nice and happy to be in some nice fresh bonsai soil with plenty of air and water being able to flow through these these roots There's a lot, a lot going on here. We'll uh, continue to comb out to reveal our root base. And then we'll, we'll take the, take them for a wash and then see what we've got to work with before we repot it. I will trim away some of those longer roots so that we can continue to work on and allow these roots to come out as radially as possible. It's exposing the fact that we've got a lot of these roots that are, they've been coming out and going around the pot as they become more and more root bound within the pot that it's been in. So we'll just take away these larger roots that are going in the wrong directions. This one that wraps itself all the way around, it kinks off from here. So we'll just take it back to that kink point. And just keep working away with what's left. Okay, so just trim away those excess ones. We'll take these, get the uh, get them washed out, and we'll see what we've got. So 
So that's the roots all cleaned up and washed through. We just, just need to make a little bit of selection on the roots. We've got our down facing roots that we need to get rid of. So we'll do that. There's quite a few in the bottom there. There's a root that comes down and goes out. We'll just take that so it's flush. The roots aren't too bad considering. There's one there that's going straight up, so we'll get rid of that. And then the rest of them, barring a profile prune, will be okay to go back into the pot. So this was the back here because there was lots of dead parts on the back there. And then this was the front. Um, I don't see any reason to change that at the moment. So we'll keep that as the front and this is the back, which will help hide these stubs that need tidying up, but we'll allow the tree to recover before we go about that. So we'll just do a profile pruning. And then we'll get the pot cleaned up and get get a repotted. So here we are back with a nice clean pot and you can see that the, the, the little tree itself is standing on its own there. Um, so the base is nice and flat at the bottom. Uh, there's not too many roots going in awkward places anymore. Uh, there's a few that we'll need to push down and into the soil as we go, but uh, it does stand up pretty well on its own. So we'll just put a base layer of soil into the pot and then we'll place the tree in. And it's standing at pretty much the same sort of height as it was originally. So we'll just fill in around the roots. And then we'll get one of the chopsticks and just work that layer in. It is dropping nicely into the spaces that we have in there. <clears throat> so it's sitting there quite nicely and let's fill in the, uh, the spaces in between all the roots with this nice fresh bonsai soil, which is 50% perlite and 50% of an absorbent material that some people refer to as turfus or safety zorb or you know any number of descriptions of terminology for what uh, different people call this but the mixture works quite well so far um, it, the one that I get is a clay fired particle that's absorbent and uh, it seems to uh, seems to work quite well. Uh, I did try and use Akadama, I've got half a bag of Akadama left upstairs which I might try and go back to but as I used the Akadama that's when we got the infestation of the uh, 
the flies etc last time and I don't necessarily really believe that it was the Akadama that caused that but it just kind of put me off using it for a while um, but I will go back to the Akadama probably at some stage and maybe mix it in 50-50 with perlite some people use straight Akadama uh, but I did notice that when I used the Akadama it uh, basically went to a uh, a mush quite quickly as as it was watered and um, in doing so I, I didn't feel that it would be getting the oxygen that it needed which the perlite helps helps provide but uh, for now we'll stick with this mixture because it's working well for us we'll just put a little bit of soil around the edges just to make sure that the roots are adequately covered just tamper it all down nicely and I did find my branch pruners which might be a bit hefty for this but I'm going to try and get in and take off this larger bit towards the back here so I'm going to come in with the pruners and take that away that just tidies up that junction a little bit and the tree is sitting quite well in there it's a little bit wobbly um, but after a water it should settle down nicely and that cut looks okay to me really there is another little bit that I might just be able to get further with the pruners that and we'll allow that to heal over so we'll just give it so the next thing to do is to give it a water so here we are with a little bottle watering system we'll give it a good thorough watering through you can hear it all soaking up as it fills all the space as well soaking all the moisture into those those particles that we were just talking about it's running out murky at the bottom and then that'll become nice and clear as all the dustiness is taken away and that looks pretty good So I have it here on the on its drip tray now and I'll just give it a full turn so you can see all the way around the tree. You're currently looking at the back so as I take it around you can see we did a lot of work on this tree and it's got a lot of growing back to do and then whether we stick with the movement of this branch or not or because that one dives are back so harshly we may end up you know bringing it off and then creating a canopy um, time will tell as this little fella progresses I'm not sure how I'm gonna go at it in the future a lot of it's going to depend on how this branch progresses with these branches and then whether we get anything from here to help create a canopy which would mean obviously that this branch that kind of crosses back across would eventually come off so that's the front there's the side view back round to the back and I'll just take it all the way back round again to the front 
So there we are, that's the Sagerita Chinese plum, which the more and more I look at it, it looks more like a ligustrum. So I'm wondering whether where it came from, they've uh, labeled them up incorrectly because it does look more like a privet ligustrum type tree than it does the uh, Sagerita. The Sagerita has a bit of, uh, The Sagerita has like serrated sort of edges to the leaves and these are really smooth so I'm beginning to think that uh, this was labelled up incorrectly um, and it's actually a ligustrum um, but time will tell even further and if I can get somebody who knows trees better than I do then uh, we'll have it confirmed but it does look more like a ligustrum than it does uh, the Chinese plum sagarita but that's how it was badged. Here we have a, a quick update on the avocado it's in its avocado pot and you can see that the uh, the root is growing around nicely and we have a little shoot off the root there which is relatively new um, I've taken the bowl and everything out of the grow tent today and cleaned up the whole setup. It was beginning to get quite a bit of algae in there and uh, it wasn't looking too great but uh, it's, it seems to be continuing to grow. We've got stuff coming out of the top and we've got some little shoots coming off the side of the trunk that's coming out of the uh, of the avocado there so hopefully that's going to carry on growing and do a good job so for now that's it for today uh, i've been scott winnard and this is let's do bonsai we'll see you again on the next one